Welcome to the big program. We are still in the middle of basketball season. Just wrapped up our coverage of the Joe Armijo Classic here on ProView Networks. That was a lot of fun. Um, got to see a lot of Las Cruces. Of course, that's kind of what everyone was talking about at the tournament. And, you know, before the calendar, before you know it, the calendar is going to flip. We'll have the Metro Tournament, and we'll have district play starting. And so we wanted to catch up with one of the outstanding players of the Joe Armijo player of the tournament, and one of my favorite players here in the city. And usually during basketball, I don't have guests on that play in the same district as the world champion Del Norte Knights, but Academy Charger Kellen Garris is my guest. Kellen, welcome to the show. Yes, sir. Thank you for having me. A lot, a lot I want to talk to you about. Obviously, there's a lot to choose from, right? You just had a fantastic football season. You're in the middle of a big basketball season. But we don't get a lot of Chargers on the program, so I want to talk about just the academic rigors of going to school there, and then we'll blend in some athletics. So let's start there. Yeah, of course, like at Academy, academics always come first. So you always have to balance academics and whatever sports you're playing. So, of course, academics is always going to be on my mind. I always got to make sure that I get all my homework done, make sure I'm studying for my tests, and that's always the number one priority. So take me through your academic day today. Did you have school today? Yeah. All right, so take me through your day today. So uh, I always wake up around 7.15, and my first class is at 8.15. Okay, and I see, use... we'll stop you right there. My senior year, late arrival. Okay, so go ahead. <laughs> all right, so go ahead. Yeah, 8.15, and then I usually will have class up until around 11.45, and then I get... Okay, what was first today? What... History. Okay, all right. I had my history final today, so that okay. was... Okay, how did that yeah. go? Felt pretty good about it. Like an A plus or an A or just a regular A? Probably just around an A, but okay. still, yeah. All right, okay. What's after that? See, I had double late arrival my senior year at Del Norte. <laughs> so I went late arrival, late arrival. Then I was my German teacher's aide. Then I had German. Then I had lunch. Then I had AP English. Then I had math. That was it, my senior year. <laughs> so what, what was after your history class? What's after that? So then I get my lunch break for around okay. an hour. And then today was like my easier day. Our classes are an hour and 15 minutes. Okay. So then after my lunch, I have a, a drop class where I just don't have a class for that okay. period. And then I went to my science class, my anatomy class to okay. end the day. All right. And then so what else is on your schedule for the semester? Uh, got my math final tomorrow. And that's okay. going to be my hard day with three classes. So, right. yeah, I got to make sure I'm okay. ready for that. And what else? And then English paper due tomorrow. Okay. How many uh, pages? Five. Okay, so that's not bad. Not terrible. All right. And then I got my uh, just a couple Spanish like homeworks to finish okay. up. Okay. All right. Okay. So, but like, talk about the hours you put in studying and homework. It's probably more than most students are used to, right? Yeah, I probably spend around an hour a day on homework. I usually try to get it done at school in like free periods, so then I don't have so much to do after practice and stuff like that. But yeah. you're not making this sound as hard as I build it up to. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I you're saying like, it's pretty simple. Yeah, I feel like when you're at academy, like most people think that academy is like right. like crazy. Right. But once you get used to the system, it, it just right. feels normal. So. Right. Uh, what about now you weave in the athletics, right? I mean, that mm -hmm. puts something else on your plate. So talk about that. Yeah, I feel like. I mean, of course, uh, sports is just going to take up time, but I feel like when I'm at practice and stuff, it's kind of just like a, like a, peace, a peace zone for me where I can just get away from school and get away from everything else. So, right. Yeah. Two sports now makes it even harder. You know, it's not like you're just doing one, right? Mm -hmm. So you're pretty much going year-round balancing school and sports there at Academy. Yeah, and I, I feel like I need sports in my life at all times just to keep me, uh, keep me active and keep me motivated to do certain things. I make, you made it sound much simpler than I think it is. I, I have talked to some other academy kids, yeah. and they made it sound a little tougher. So I don't know. I don't think you're being <laughs> modest here, Kellen. I don't know. I, I can't say I went to Del Norte, so I can't, I can't say. But I've heard that it's much tougher than you made it sound. I mean, has there ever been moments where you're like, man, this is, this is kind of rough? Yeah, always at the end of the semester is when it starts to get pretty hard. I, to, this year has kind of been like a little bit weird because of we're back full time with COVID. Right. So I feel like teachers are giving us a little bit more of like a – a benefit of the doubt but like in the past like at the end of the semester it's always been really tough i mean if i was scratching those kind of tuition checks i would want you to say yes it is very rigorous yeah i don't go to sleep <laughs> until 11 I, you know all those things but yeah. man you're making it all work and you've had a a really fantastic athletic season but you know uh so you got finals this week right mm -hmm. so yeah. how's that what's that like as an athlete finals week is how is it different than maybe a non-athlete? Of course it's going to be like really stressful just because you know that we have practice too so you feel like that got to be a practice and you got to go home and study for finals so it's going to be stressful but I just know that like in the end it's just going to like help me out going to college and right. stuff. So. 
What about what's the athletic piece look like on campus? Like, is it a smaller group of kids? Is it, you know, I mean, just take us into that kind of campus vibe. I feel like, like, each team kind of has, like, their own group. And you can, I mean, it's really easy to tell, like, who's, like, the cross-country right. runners or the football players. Because we all, we all, like, hang around each other because everyone pretty much gets along. But also, like, we have a lot of kids, like, in my friend group that just don't play sports or just right. in different sports. So I feel like we just mix really well. So. Okay. All right. Well, I do want to get into athletics, so we'll take our first time out with Kellen. But when we get back, I want to get into football. Uh, I know you had some exciting news this week, so we'll talk about that, and we'll get into some basketball more with Academy Charger Kellen Garris right after this. Kylie Oppmann bodies that ball. Ava Love, wide open bucket. She drifts through the air and knocks it home. So Out of the corner, no. Nora with the rebound, quickly gets it ahead to Weiss. In transition, the left hand layup is good for Luciano Webster. Lyra Corona, she has a chance to change that story. She does. Diaz now with the ball. It's a three-point lead. Montoya, she tries to equalize. Boom! Olivia Montoya with her second three ball of the second half. <laughs> there's a there's an assist from half court on the inbounds pass. That's a long shot. <laughs> the laser shot. Holy cow. Closes down quickly. Garcia Romero for two. Throw it up. He's gonna throw it up to his big fella, and his third dunk of the night. I, I... Hey, remember, Greg Brown doesn't have any timeouts. They get it into Hill. Hill can have a chance to win it at the hole. Yeah, he does it. Oh. Hill bangs oh. in the three, <laughs> and the Hawks win it, 60 to 59. I'm attorney Mo Maestas. I just want to wish all the athletes, coaches, and families a very Merry Christmas this holiday season. Be sure to play hard, play through the clock, and have a great time with your teammates. I've been a trial lawyer in this town for 23 years, so you can get a hold of me at 505-304-7497. But have a very Merry Christmas. God bless, and we'll see you in the new year. For 50 years, Clark's Pet Emporium has been your pet's favorite stop. Clark's has shelves full of pet beds, sweaters, toys, and treats, habitats, and tanks galore. Locally owned and operated with two convenient locations, Clark's is celebrating 50 years thanks to you. The Christmas Superstore, clarkspets.com. All right, we're back with a multiple sports star from Albuquerque Academy, Kellen Garris. Football season just wrapped up, so let's naturally talk about that. You guys have a pretty special year at Academy. Mm -hmm. uh, I would imagine not a lot of focus on football normally at Academy, right? Yeah. Well, this year that changed in a hurry. Mm -hmm. So talk about that at the beginning of the season. When did you guys kind of start to feel it? Yeah, I felt, of course, like at Academy – there hasn't been a lot of football cult culture in the past, right. especially because our record hasn't been the greatest. But I felt like this year after our Hope game, which was the third game of the season, when we pulled off a win against a pretty good Hope team, that everyone like, started to like, really give us like, credit. And that's when I feel like that uh, the culture is starting to build and that uh, we had like, more fans come out yeah. and stuff. So. Did you guys feel that as a unit? Like, hey, we're pretty good? Or I mean, when did it kind of... 
Was that right around the same time? or? Yeah, we knew that we were going to have a good chance to make a playoff run this year, but we knew that we just had to fit like the pieces together. And I felt like in that Hope game, we knew that, okay, like well, we can do this. You had a, some new pieces as well, right? So mm -hmm. talk about that. Yeah, of course, we had like a guy like Nico Fulgenzi who came down from Las Vegas, right. uh, New Mexico. And he was like a big help. He's just uh, our aggressor, our, like, our defense guy that's not afraid of any contact. So he was a big piece. And then, of course, Cole Conway moving to the So what was back. your initial thoughts of, let's go back to Nico. Mm -hmm. Guy shows up in practice with his little, you know, showing off the abs. He's got a tat. Yeah. Yeah. Like, that's a little different, right, for yeah. Academy? Like, was that like, yeah, we got a dude. Like, how excited were you when he joined the squad? I was so excited. But if I'm being completely honest, when Nico and I first met, we did not like each other okay. whatsoever. What but is I, that? Oh, we just was had, it the abs? It was like we were like just two alphas that just went okay. at each other. But that's good for, yeah, for was, a team, right? To have yeah, alphas. it was good. But then over time, like he just became he became like a brother to me. Right. So now we're like super close. But yeah, him showing up with tats <laughs> and all that, we were like, who is this guy? Right, yeah. right. But that's someone you want on your team, right? Someone that's yeah. just gonna hit hard and you know what he's bringing to the table. All right. So who else? Who are some of the other new pieces that kind of came in? Uh, Cole Conway, of course, he's, he was at Academy, but he moved into the running back role this right. year. And, of course, he had a standout year over 1,000 yards rushing. So I feel like he was just a massive help to us this year just because he just gave defenses a different look, and that was a really big help. Right. Do the seasons traditionally start with any sort of expectations there? Or is it just like, all right, let's go do our best? But, you know, the records have been what they have been in years mm -hmm. past. Is that accurate? Or, I mean, how is the beginning of the season normally? I feel like normally like you just have to go into the season and just like feel like that, okay, we can make it to the state championship and win a blue trophy. But then as the season goes on, that's when you can really start telling like if right. that's going to become a reality or not. So I, that was our mindset going in, that we just need to have a winner's mentality and just go in and try to win a state championship. Right. And so when did it start to like get like, okay, we're, we're going to make a run here. We'll be in the playoffs. When kind of picked it up from there. Yeah, I feel like uh, our first district game against Bernalillo, since Bernalillo, at least since I've been playing at Academy, they've kind of been like our kryptonite where we right. can't, like, especially with AD Madrid and all those guys, we couldn't really like get past them. We couldn't get over the hump. But I feel like this year at that night game, we really got over that hump and we just like beat our rival. So that was like a big confidence booster right. for me and the guys. I do want to talk about the night game a little bit. Like the build up to that, you know, it was announced several months prior, so that was huge. And then when it was first announced, you guys were still undefeated at that time. Yeah. And they ended up not being undefeated going into it, but there was a possibility that both of those teams could be undefeated, right? So there was a long buildup to that game, mm -hmm. at least from our perspective on the outside. Was the buildup like that on campus as well? Yeah, uh, as soon as we figured out that we were going to have a night game, of course it was going to be historic first night game in school history. And then, uh, you know, Bernalillo, they were rolling at that time where they were just beating everybody by 50. Right. So I felt like it was just a really good buildup for a big-time game that was just, it was going to be fireworks. Did it live up to your expectations? I mean, what were your expectations of that? Like, did you see a buzz on campus yeah, the, the every, week of? Yeah, everyone was talking about it. They are like, oh, I'm going to be at the game, I'm going to be at the game, good luck. And, so. like, you usually hear that noise, right? And then, like, 20 of them show up, and you're like, all yeah. right. Yeah. Okay, so, so did you yeah. think they would all really show up? or? Yeah, yeah, like you said, like, I didn't really know. I knew that it was going to be, like, historic for us, but right. I didn't really know about the fans. But when everyone showed up, that's when I was like, okay, like, this is real. So talk about that. Like, when, you know, you guys kind of you come out of that little tunnel area, right? Mm -hmm. Talk about that when you guys first spotted, like how many people were there, and then you saw the lights. Talk about that. Yeah, we were all we were all in shock. When we looked at the fans, we were like, okay, like we, we have to win now. There's no way we can lose this game. <laughs> right. Yeah. And, I mean, was it a different – I mean, what were, your team, what were some of your teammates expecting of that experience? I know you told me what you expected of it. Mm -hmm. But I mean, what, did Coach talk to you guys about that? Like, hey, let's try to make a statement here. This is special for you kids. Or what was the vibe like pregame? Yeah, he, our coach always talks about like uh, just trying to like make everything just memorable and just make it like a memory that mm -hmm. you're just gonna remember. So we just went out there, and like most of the guys, you could tell that everyone was a little nervous just because we haven't been in that environment before. Right. But I, as soon as that uh, first kickoff went, we knew that it was game time. And we knew that we had to come out and play. Now, as a receiver and a kick returner, <laughs> like yeah. there were some dark spots on that field. Yeah, a lot of them. So how was that, man? How was seeing the ball, especially on kicks? Because uh, I noticed kicks; those went above the level of the lights, right? So talk yeah, about that. Yeah, it was it was weird because like it was you would look up and then the lights would kind of like blind you just for a little bit, and then the ball you could see the ball. So it was just a lot of adjusting, and you just had to be like ready really quick for the ball to be there. So take us through that game because that's a big game against a, a big rival team. Yeah, so I knew that they were probably because me and Tristan, Ludi Herrera, were pretty good friends. Right. So I knew that, and Coach Kobos always gets the team like ready to play. Right. So I knew that it was going to be a tough uh, offense game for us. That we just had to really just roll. And Cole getting some early touches and good yards really helped us out. And then, but of course, Mark McIntosh's 
big time touchdown. Uh -huh. And I think it was in the third quarter where he uh, caught that like 15 yard touchdown that really helped us. And then Tristan, of course, scores on that 56 right. yard touchdown. And then I was like, okay, like <laughs> I knew it was going to be a close game. We got to hang on here. Yeah, right? I was like, okay, we got to try to finish this out. So then we just stepped up big in the end. Now you guys had some up up until that point. You guys had some really high scoring games, right? Where mm -hmm. where AJ is just throwing the ball around, and yeah. it's huge high scoring games. But that turned into a real defensive struggle. That was a different game than what you guys have been playing that whole season. Uh, talk about how you guys adjusted to that. Yeah, of course, like we were a little frustrated because we just felt like we should beat everybody by a lot. But then at halftime, we kind of put it in like perspective that like this is a good team and we can't just blow everybody out. So we knew that we just had to take the play a smart game and not just try to like go for the game winning play every right. single every single coach. Play. Did coach tell you guys anything about you know once you could tell it was going to be a close game? Did he kind of did you guys talk about that at all or just kind of do your thing on the field? We just kind of did our thing, but he like let us know that like. Uh, you guys just have to be ready for a close game, you know. These, right. these what was the halftime talk like? Yeah, he said. I think we were. It, it might have been seven zero at halftime. Right. So I feel like that he just went in the locker room. He just told us that we have to keep working. You guys have to like want it more than they do because it's going to come down to the wire. So tell us about or tell the audience about. Obviously, coach is special to you. So tell us yeah. about that relationship. Yeah, having my dad as the coach is just it's it's like amazing because I mean I feel like I can talk to him about anything. Um, but then it's also great because he's got a lot of knowledge and he's been through a lot of situations, so it helps out the team a lot. Right. Is it ever not amazing? Of course, of course when he gets mad, it's kind of like, oh, like that's my dad. Like, yeah. he's, he's getting super mad. So, of course, it's a little like, different for me. But I feel, like, I feel like overall it was just like, a really great experience just having him as a coach. And how was it seeing, looking at him from his perspective, you know, as a, you know, instead of having a team that's like, all right, let's just get out there this year, you know, here's all this attention. Mm -hmm. We're playing for something this year. I mean, how, how was that like for him? Yeah, it was really special for him because he knew, like, we, uh, my freshman year when he first got the job, we, I think we were four and seven, and then spring COVID season, we were two and two. Right. So he just, his motto was just, we got to keep building up the program and keep building up the culture. So when we started, when we started winning games and we just started rolling as a team, I, you could just tell that he was, like, proud of us right. for, doing that so I mean what was the team mindset after that big game like confidence at an all-time high I mean talk about where you guys are at at that point uh yeah well, I, I, of course we had a lot of confidence after a big time game like that but then we knew that we just had to focus on every single week and focus on every single game like it was a very important game so yeah brackets come out for football and there's teams actually talking about like, hey academy could maybe navigate their way through that's different yeah. right so talk about that yeah when we got the bracket when we saw Bernalillo again we knew that we would probably get Bernalillo again so we just knew that we had to be ready to play them twice and then we saw Moriarty who of course they're a really great team so yeah. we knew that we had a, a couple good teams that we had to beat to get there so yeah what about as you reflect back on the season? I mean, talk about your team. If you sat, if you had any team goals at the beginning, did you set any team goals? You know, where do you think your team goals were at? Did you hit most of them? And then talk about individually because you had a monster season. Mm, I felt that our team we accomplished most of the goals except winning, of course, the state championship. Right. But um, getting. To but the, everyone yeah. kind of says that at the yeah. beginning of the year, right? I feel like like, that's just like like a big it doesn't goal. mean that if you don't do that, it wasn't a great season, right? Because yeah. only one team wins. Yeah. So I mean, you guys still had a pretty fantastic year. Mm -hmm. I feel like the main goal also was just like trying to get to the playoffs because I mean we didn't get to the playoffs since 2012. Right. So it was just really special for us to get to the playoffs too, and then the other goal for our team was just to keep building up the team, keep building up the culture because we didn't have any when we first got there. So, right. Yeah. What about individually now? I mean, you racked up a really nice season. Talk about that. Uh, of course, I wanted to be over 1,000 yards receiving because I knew that I would probably be close. Right. And then uh, first team all state, first team all metro, first team all dis district was big for me because it was my first year actually playing a district schedule. Right. So I knew that I had to just, like, try to make some noise in the district. And those all state teams came out this, this week, right? Mm -hmm. So congratulations. Thank you. I just kind of assumed that it was going to happen, so yeah. I started saying on TV <laughs> during basketball games, oh, yeah, all state receiver, all state receiver. And it was nice to see you rewarded as you should have been when those came out. I mean, that's still a big deal, right, when those lists come out? Yeah, it, it was a really great feeling. But then, of course, I can't give enough credit to my quarterback, AJ, for right. giving me all the looks and just actually giving me the opportunity to get awards like that. But, I mean, you had to do some of that work, too, man. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> like, you know, I mean, I, the games I've been to, like, you're jumping against two, three defenders yeah. a lot. So so that was definitely a, a pretty fun season, right? I mean, you that offense has got to be pretty fun to play in as a receiver, right? Yeah, our offensive coordinator does a great job of trying to uh, spread the love a little bit with, like, run game and then trying to find the different receivers. So it's a really fun offense to be in. What about after the season? What was kind of 
what was the vibe after the season? You know, what's coming back next year? What what was the message moving forward? I guess I should. This is my question. Yeah, of course we were we were heartbroken for yeah. a really long time just because it was a really tough loss. But then we knew that like next year we're gonna have a good shot. Also having our starting quarterback, starting right. running back, most of the line and linebackers all coming back. So I know that we just have a good chance to, and we just gotta prepare like we did this year if we want to make another playoff. Run. You feel like. You guys have done the job or started doing the job of putting academy football on the map. I feel like we did because I, I know definitely we had more people talking about us this year, so that was a good step. And then also in school, I mean, we never had the support that we had this year where right. everyone's talking and just saying good luck. So I feel like, that, yeah, we just really started to build up a true culture at academy. All right, we'll take our final time out here. We'll be back with Kellen when we talk some hoops right after this. I'm Terry Wilson quarterback for you, New Mexico Lobos. Growing up in Oklahoma City, my Boys and Girls Club was a safe place where I would go to play sports, practice important values like respect and integrity, and of course, always do my homework. Here in New Mexico, the Boys and Girls Club is having a huge impact on kids and teens every day after school. All you Lobo fans out there, support the Boys and Girls Club and help our young people learn and grow. Great futures start here. Terry Wilson. When looking for the best experience while buying an all-new Kia, Fiesta Kia offers some of the most knowledgeable and friendly Kia specialists in New Mexico. They'll help you find the Kia that will meet all your expectations. Kias have some of the most affordable vehicles for you to choose from, offering extensive options and style for the price. And with a 10-year, 100,000-mile warranty, Kia won't be beat. Come be a part of the Fiesta family today, 7400 Lomas Boulevard Northeast, or start driving now at FiestaKia.com. Jackson Compaction wants to help you keep your green and keep the community green as well. Jackson Compaction has worked hard to maintain the same prices since day one. Always easy and painless trash removal with professional crews and quality service. If it's non-hazardous waste, debris, or trash on your land, leave it to us. At Jackson Compaction, we're dedicated to ensuring the conservation of our environment. You trash it, we smash it. Jackson Compaction, we've earned a reputation for great results. For 50 years, Clark's Pet Emporium has been your pet's favorite stop. Santa Paws has left thousands of holiday gifts for your furry, scaly, and winged family members. Pick up a gift for a pet lover or even a new pet. Clark's has shelves full of pet beds, sweaters, toys and treats, habitats, and tanks galore. Locally owned and operated with two convenient locations for all your pet needs. 11200 Manal Northeast or 4914 Lomas Northeast. Clark's is celebrating 50 years thanks to you, the Christmas Superstore. ClarksPets.com All right, we're back with Kellen Garris. We're going to talk some hoops now. As soon as the football season ends, it's transition right into hoops, right? And, and normally there's that little break, but no break when you make the playoffs, my man. Nah. So you go right into hoops. Talk about that. Yeah, so we played Moriarty on Friday, and then we had our first basketball tryouts on Monday. So, of course, that practice was a little harder yeah. with conditioning-wise. But, yeah, I didn't have really any break. So, so I always hear coaches tell me about basketball shape, right? Like, yeah. that's a real thing, right? Yeah. So what's the transition from football to basketball when it comes to that basketball shape that basketball coaches always talk about? Yeah, basketball shape's a real thing. Especially I felt it on that first practice right. when we were just running, and I was like, yeah, I'm out of shape. But then, of course, in football, you feel like, oh, I'm in shape, I'm in shape. Right. But then when you get on basketball and you just have to run all the time, yeah, you feel out of shape. Now, obviously, you're in a district with the – world champion Del Norte Knights. Yeah. So what do you guys have to do to finish right below the Knights in a very respectable second place? Well, we're going to try to beat them this year. I've never beat them before, <laughs> but we'll see. We'll see if we can get them this year. But yeah, of course, our district is super tough. Yeah, that's a so, tough district. Yeah, we just got to make sure that we just got to come out and play every single game right. and show up. So Academy tournament obviously is a great thing for that because you see some teams that I mean, Las Cruces isn't finding their way onto your schedule yeah. unless it's at the Academy Tournament, right? Yeah. So that's a cool experience, getting to play some teams that you normally wouldn't play. So talk about the Academy Tournament that we just had. Yeah, it was a great experience for, like, me and the guys because our team's super young, so we, didn't, we haven't played in Joe Armijo together before. Right. So it was, it was a great experience, especially playing against, I think we played all 5A schools. Right. So that was, a, like, a great uh, test for us to see where we were at. But then, of course, playing Deuce and Isaiah Carr right. was I mean, also that's just a little a different. Right? Yeah. <laughs> there's 5A and then there's the best 5A. Yeah. So, I mean, 
what were your exp- – I mean, we talked, right, the game before. You were the player of the game. And I think the question I asked you was, hey, when your head hits the pillow tonight, you're thinking about tomorrow, you're playing Deuce and Isaiah, right? So what was that like? I mean, obviously, you know the crowd's not there to see Academy, mm-hmm. right? This huge yeah. crowd's there to see Las Cruces. What was that like? Yeah, we knew that it was going to be, like, a really tough to try to stop those dudes because, yeah. of course, they're going to go to the next level and just – like excel right but we of course coming to the game we just knew that okay we got to try to beat these guys we got to try to do our best but then of course at the end of the game when they won it's not like we were super disappointed because we know that how much talent they right, have. right right yeah. but you guys were in that game at the beginning mm-hmm. I, I thought you know you guys really looked good in that first quarter um i thought mason looked really good for a big yeah. guy against that team i thought you know i said man this is going to help them out during district a lot i mean you know, you take games like that and you build for the future, right? I mean, where do you, where are you guys at mentally now as a team, you think? Yeah, I feel like that we're really strong mentally because, of course, uh, we, we've lost two games so far. But other than that, we've I feel like we've just rattled off some pretty good wins, especially for a guy like Mason going against Isaiah Carr. It's just a great experience for him to learn and just like, keep building his game up. Well, we thought kind of as we were doing the broadcast, Danny and I were like, well, Academy, that you guys were really patient and, and then the dunks started happening. Yeah. And then it's like the whole game started speeding up a little bit. Did you feel that on the court as well? Or? Yeah, when, when Isaiah Carter started dunking everything, that's when I was like, okay, he's actually seven foot. When he's yeah. just dunking without jumping, I was like, okay. Really? And then all the ooh and ah moments started happening. Yeah. And it seems like you guys got caught up in that a little bit, and, and you started running your offense a little faster than you guys maybe were comfortable with. Uh, what does that feel like on the floor while it's happening? I can see it as a broadcaster when it's happening, but what does it feel like on the floor when it's a player? Yeah, we kept we kept trying to slow it down and just try to like be yeah. ourselves as a team. But of course, when you just see all these dunks and yeah. the crowd starts going crazy, you want to just try to get a, a bucket real quick just to try to like silence them a little right. bit. So we were forcing some shots, but yeah. And then when your home crowd is you know asking Deuce to dunk it, that's got to nah. suck a little bit, right? Yeah, no, that was not that was not good at all. Yeah. <laughs> what about like you played some other sports too, right? You're down to basketball and football, but mm-hmm. you started like with everything on your plate as a kid, right? Yeah, tennis, golf, wrestling, uh, soccer, all of it, yeah. You're not leaving any, anything out? Oh, gymnastics. Okay, all right, right. Okay. <laughs> put them all out there, right? So, I mean, when did they all kind of go away? Um, so I, I felt like that, uh, that wrestling was first go because my dad was a wrestler and he right. was a state champion, state champion in Virginia. So I just felt like I kind of needed to wrestle, but wrestling just went first because it just wasn't for me, and then slowly – gymnastics one and then golf and then I still kind of play tennis a little bit but not really like competitively right well I mean competitive tennis at academy that's like different yeah the competitive tennis at academy (laughs) is crazy yeah yeah Yeah, so you pretty much have to do that 10 hours a day right yeah Yeah. all right well it has been a real nice joy watching you on both on the football field and on the basketball court so continued success best of luck the rest of the way against everyone except the Knights. And thanks for coming in. That's Academy's Kellen Garris. Thank you for watching, and good night, everybody.